Today is Thursday, the 20th of December. Uh, I want to do an update after part one and part two of this video series. Um, this is running with the stock KEDI drivers. And I actually got a response from Juge, the uh, writer of the GitHub library, and he had some really good information. Um, he valued the, uh, the feedback of being able to see me go through the process and has offered some advice um, very specific to the times and details of what I was doing. Um, and then uh, actually apologized for some of the issues that I ran into. Um, but he actually went back and uh, made his uh, installation and, and whatnot a little bit easier. So he updated his uh, repository with um, some details about um, the divisor not having a default value, uh, that um, a little note that uh, DMA transfers is disabled for the KEDI um, uh, driver, um, the fact that if you don't have CMake already installed, that um, that will go in there as well as part of your instructions. Um, and then the fact that statistics uh, is set to one by default. Uh, again, with the CMake details and then some more specifics about uh, DMA drivers or d d clock divisors and DMA transfers. So um, I think he got some good feedback from my video, which is great. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, he's very um, committed to uh, working on these projects. Uh, so thank you, sir. I appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to watch and to give me some feedback. I just want to point out that I've been uh, documenting in OneNote and then uploading that with the uh, magical upload to blog function. And so you can go ahead and uh, go check out the notes for these videos that I've been putting together. And so I think what we're going to do is we're going to actually give this a try again and see if we can't get the fast library installed with the uh, feedback. That we All right. So I'm going to be playing with the library again. Um, real quick, I'm going to take the current state of the device, which is currently running the display using the stock KEDI driver. And so we nuke the RF, RMRF. Uh, yeah, we, we, we delete the build file. We make a new build file. We've got the KEDI display, clock divisors to 40, DMA transfers off. Statistic zero. Oops. Try again. Forgot to go into the build folder. Completed successfully, so we'll do a make J. And let me reiterate it is currently working and running the existing stock. KEDI drivers, so I have to go in and see what those changes are. This is a quick one, just to, to, to try this as an experiment. So I want to see if there's anything in here that talks about this new driver. It does not appear to be. So let's do the same for the boot config. So uh, I don't really know how this stock driver works because, I mean, it doesn't use anything in here. Everything is still in there from before. It's all commented out. The only thing that's not commented out is uh, an audio-related item, uh, and I don't, I don't think that we have to worry about that for right now um, because it's for the the Broadcom module. The only thing that I added in my troubleshooting was uh, avoid warnings too, which um, has something to do with low voltage and whatnot. I'm going to leave that as is disabled for now. So we'll just go up a folder and then we'll just do, um, all right, and we're going to run FBCP. Oop. Grab the file name and folder, put sudo on. 
Who knows what's going to happen? We get a white screen. That's what happens. So, I mean, that's what happens when it's running currently. You run the software. So, I, you know, I, I'm mixing things right now. So, let's just stop right here. All right, let's just turn it off. I already shut down with the shutdown command. It's off. So, let's... Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll restart it. I don't think it's going to make a difference because this display comes up in the beginning. This is with the stock drivers. So it is outputting a little bit of information to the HDMI. It's actually telling me that my voltage is at fault. I found that... Um, and, uh, an article about my HDMI to VGA adapter can cause those kinds of things um, and that it can be ignored, kind of. So what I want to do is take this fine working Raspberry Pi with the driver, the stock driver installed, and I just want to play with the new KEDI fast SPI thing again. So I'm going to actually rebuild the Pi. Ta-da! Oh, this thing again. There we go. Continue documentation. Everything looks good. Make J like me. We got it. So here it is. We have not run the program yet. It is just kind of chilling down here. I got a white screen. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, uh, but I'm going to pause. Get some random stuff moving around on the screen. And with my other hand, I've got the thing ready to go. And we click. There was a change. I saw that. It did something. Um, let's see. Is it going to move if I move something around? Moving the, the screen around over there. Not seeing anything. Let's play the game for a minute. This is a fun game. Wait. Oh, no. What you're supposed to do is find smaller squirrels than yourself and eat them or attack them. Ugh, come back. 
Ah, uh, that's kind of what's going on with this. Uh, I feel like the little squirrel. So I'm gonna zap my build folder. I'm gonna make a new one. Although sometimes you can win just by letting the game play itself. Not sure that works for life though. Let's try the settings he used. 12 at 400 megahertz. Now we're also gonna go into the boot config. I'm gonna come down I'm going to add a special line at the end. A little lightning bolt. I've disabled Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to save a little bit of power, but in my bootconfig.txt, we are also setting avoid warnings equals to 2 and the core frequency set to 4, such that when we divide 400 by 12, we get 33.3 .3 megahertz. Megahertz. Toss that in the rc.local. Oh yeah, we forgot to make J. Megahertz! Reboot. Goodbye, Omega Squirrel. Reboot now. There we go. All right. We just got the flash. We're watching. Raspberry Pi up on the screen. Screen waggled a little bit. Ooh, ooh, all right. So we're at the same, the same situation. I'm gonna pull up menu stuff here and wiggle it around. I can get something to display. So something, it's very strange is going on. It's as if, it's as if the, uh, I don't really know. I'm not sure what this behavior looks like, aside from broken. Tis a mystery. I mean, is it running at 400 megahertz? I was trying to figure out if there were some things that would tell me what I was uh, looking for here. And uh, I mean, this was helpful to get what I think is the validation of 400 megahertz. Megahertz! Just interesting uh it is dynamically adjusting so i had it just sitting chilling and it was running at uh 600 megahertz and then i launched the squirrel game again and it went up to uh 1.4 gigahertz just for giggles i downloaded the good tft lcd show util installed it and i'm about to run it oh um, this isn't what I thought it was. This is a driver for the LCD and a different way to do it. Okay, well, it's rebooting. It hung on boot for some reason, so I just manually restarted it. Okay. I think I broke it. Trigger happy global hotkey demon. I think that guy is the one who's causing me issues. Goodbye. This is where it's at. We're rebooting. And I don't think I'm going to end up doing anything else with this. I've got a clean Raspberry Pi install. And no drivers at all. And I just think that unless I use this display for very basic information uh, I'm just not going to be able to use it for anything 
video game related or video related at all. It'll be for very slow, refreshing information. So I will heed the advice given. And uh, when I have a need for a higher speed, I will buy something good. This is this is cheap Chinese junk that meets the minimum spec of being able to display pixels and uh, pixely pixels at that. So, sorry, sir, we couldn't get you to work. But you were $13, so it's really not that big of a deal. You you provided me with an opportunity to learn more. And so that $13, wow, that was that was an investment of time that I was more than willing to invest. And this was the opportunity for it. So that's great. Um, big thanks again to uh, to Juka. Juge over on uh, the GitHubs. So if you want a blazing fast display driver for SPI-based LCD displays, then you can head over to Adafruit for an ILI9341 or one of those HX8357D displays. Or if you get lucky and feel a little risky, one of those MZ6158 displays. Raspberry Pi. Wait, what? this is the wrong channel. Subscribe.